this week's Parsha. It's actually something that we did a few years back. Um, I'm revisiting it, maybe adding a little bit, um, changing things, but the uh, but basically it's a um, one of the many mitzvot. Now we are, we hit the section of Sefer Vayikra and Achrimot Kedushim, where the mitzvah components of the of the sefer um, are more intense. Um, this will continue through Parshat Bahar, um, a little bit less in Bchukotai, and the emphasis as opposed to the beginning of Sefer Vayikra, is not on the um, korbanot and not on the mishkan, but on um, more general mitzvot um, and mitzvot that apply in all sorts of circumstances. The mitzvah specifically that I'm going to be speaking about are mitzvot of lotikom and lotitor, not to, um, to take revenge, um, nor to bear a grudge, um, and we're going to talk about them specifically. Um, however, it's important to note that they are found at the beginning of uh, Parshat Kedoshim. And um, in Parshat Kedoshim, the uh, Torah is uh, giving us this list of mitzvot. And in, um, in a certain way, it's bringing us back to, to Sinai. I'm going to um, go a little bit out of order in terms of the Makorot here um, and uh, focus on this uh, a number a number two we'll come back to number one in just one moment um that the just a, a snippet of it it's a uh, midrash in vayikra rabba but it's an idea which is spoken about um quite a lot um rabbi levi amar why is this the question that's being asked is why is this called parashat kedoshim what the, what is the the kedusha that's involved and the answer that uh, Rabbi Levi gives is that the Aseret Hadibrot are um, included in it. Anochi Hashem Elokecha, Uktiv Hacha, Ani Hashem Elokechem. What's the, um, here we have this statement of Ani Hashem Elokechem, and that is parallel to what we are familiar with in the first of the Dibrot of Anochi Hashem um, Elokecha. Um, and then the Midrash in, in the part that I have deleted here is uh, edited out, is basically goes mitzvah by mitzvah, trying to show the parallel and the comparisons. And it's not just parallel and comparisons, it's, it's also a deepening of the concepts of the Aserat Dibrot as they are found there, with the, um, the way that they are reflected on perhaps a slightly um, or more than slightly more sophisticated level at times um, in the in Parshat Kedoshim. Um, so here, though, we continue. Lo tignov, v'ktiv hacha, lo tignovu, v'lo tichachashu. Do not uh, steal, nor should you deny, um, and in other words, deny a legitimate claim of a, that a person might have against you. That's also a form of stealing. Lo ta'ane et re'acha, so just here's a good example of where you can see how Parshat Kedoshim is not just parroting the uh, Aseret Hadibrot, but deepening and broadening uh, simultaneously the construct. Lo ta'ane d'reacha et shaker. So you have this idea, which is more specific to the courts, that you should not um, bear false witness against your fellow person. Uchtiv hacha lo telech rachil ba'amecha. And in here, in Parshat Kedoshim, the parallel is not to be a tale-bearer, not to speak lashon hara, um, etc. Um, so, and rechilut might be false testimony, rechilut might also be true testimony. In other words, it's not, it's not testimony in the sense of in being in the court, it's, um, it's chit-chat between people but that is also an expansion of the idea of the Aseret HaDibrot of Lo Ta'ane V'Reacha Eid Shaker. Right? So that is a, a good uh, example of how the Midrash is not simply saying the Parshat Kedoshim is a retelling of the Aseret HaDibrot, but it's a reframing of the Aseret HaDibrot in order to make them uh, make it uh, all the more profound and deeper. Finally, in our, in our case, Lo Tachmod, so the you have the isur of lo tachmod, 
of not to covet, right? Which we've spoken about at different uh, times in terms of what is the expectation of non of not coveting. Uh, we might touch upon it a little bit here as well, but we have the much broader idea of not simply not wanting to ex- receive something which doesn't, um, or to take something which doesn't uh, belong to me, but also to to love my neighbor as myself. The golden rule, etc. So this is the framework that the beginning of Parshat Kedoshim, at least from this, mid, this Midrash's uh, viewpoint, um, is. It's basically saying, take the most basic core of the Torah, the Aser Tadibrot, after all, that, what, what, that is what was told to us directly at Sinai, that is what is inscribed on the Aser Tadibrot, that's what's inside the Aron Ha'edut, inside the Aron HaKodesh, inside the Beit HaMikdash, that's the core, and expand it to Gedoshim to you, that you have to be Kadosh. These concepts don't belong just inside the Mikdash where we can give it lip service. They are, uh, the, these are tenets that you're supposed to be actively um, engaging and actively um, expressing. Within the context of a Haftalarecha Kamocha, so let's go back to Lotikom and Lotitor, okay? not to take revenge, and not to uh, bear a grudge. Here, there are two psukim, perik yutet, psukim, yudzayin, and yudchet. And the Torah says, lo tisnat achicha bilvavecha, hocheach tochiach et amitecha, lo tisa alavchet. So the first pasuk is, do not hate your brother in your heart. Hocheach tochiach et amitecha, confront and castigate your, uh, your fellow person. Lo tisa alavchet, and do not have a, do not bear a sin against him. Lo tikom the lo titor. Do not take, uh, do not uh, take revenge. Do not bear a grudge at b'nei amecha. V'ahavta l'recha kamocha ani And be, um, and to love your neighbor as yourself. Now, if you take a look, this is just uh, an aside, but here in this, in this, these two psukim, the Torah uses different terms, right? Achicha, right? You have that, your, your brother, you have amitecha, you have your, your fellow person, you have b'nei amecha, right? People of your um, the, the, the your your brothers of the or uh, not brothers excuse me the members of your nation and l'reacha right your your neighbor or your fellow words within the context the the Torah is using different terms to describe the relationship now you could and um, begin to parse this and say oh is is there a difference between achicha? Is there a difference between achicha and amitecha? Between amitecha and bnei amecha? Between bnei amecha and reacha? For my purposes right now, I'm going to assume that they're basically the same idea, but that the Torah is perhaps for literary reasons, perhaps for um, to give an expression of different kinds of relationships that people have, that the um, that we have a um, um, that we have this idea of that that's going on in terms of the um, um, the different types of people, different types of relationship. The Ramban was sensitive, though, not to the as much to the noun that's involved in the subject of the, or the of the object, I should say, of achicha, amitecha, neamecha, and reacha, but rather to the subject, the person who is being commanded and the actions that he is supposed to be taking or not to be taking. And he basically says that the idea here, of is a, um, there is a, a progression that's involved. Lotisnat achicha bilvavecha, right? Well, let's read the Ramban inside. Yomar katuv, al tisna et achicha bilvavecha, ba'asotolacha shelo kirtzolcha. In other words, we begin with a 
interaction uh, between two human beings. And there's a reason why I might want to hate a person, Bill Vavi. Why would I want to, to hate? Where are we talking about, you know, what we co- would classically call sinat chinam, something that, you know, we, that we're dealing with people who are um, just simply that, you know, for no reason whatsoever, baseless hatred? No, presumably the reason why I might be hating someone is because he's wronged me in some kind of way. Um, so this person has, has hurt me. So don't hold it in your heart, the Ramban says. Specifically um, in your heart. Don't do that, but rather, confront the person. Ask him, why did you do this to me? In other words, what the Ramban is saying, it's very um, perhaps obvious, but at the same time, very deep psychological uh, insight. That the best way to diffuse a confrontation, to diffuse tension between two people is to is for the person who feels that he's been wronged or she's been wronged to confront the other individual um, in an open way and not to hold it in, right? Normally we say, okay, you know, just let it, let it slide. And the Ramban is saying that the Torah is saying, don't let it slide in that regard, but rather be open and to be confronting. Now, normally speaking, when we talk about tochacha, and perhaps for another Shir, I'll, uh, I'll focus on this idea of hocheach tochiach et amitecha. What does it mean to uh, confront another person? The, um, you know, normally speaking, we talk about tochacha, and we, um, it, it, certainly in yeshiva circles, um, we uh, think of it in the sense of um, religi- religiosity. You see a person doing something which is religiously uh, problematic, um, and you have an obligation to uh, put him on the straight and narrow. So that is a, um, what is an outgrowth, the Ramban would say, of, of uh, hocheach tochiach. Now there's just, a, just as an aside, um, there's a, um, a, a famous uh, quip by Rabbi Yisrael Salanter um, that he said that Generally speaking, people are very makbid about their own olam hazeh and other people's olam haba. Right? And if we were to be able to flip that and care more about other people's olam hazeh and our own olam haba, the world would be a much better place. Right? The, um, so that's the, the tochacha. But the Ramban is saying the tochacha here is not the tochacha that, as I said, oh, you see somebody who is being mechal Shabbat and you uh, try to talk to them about how uh, they should be uh, uh, better sa- Sabbath observers. No, tochichenu here is interpersonal. And you are, uh, that's the pshat. To, um, you, it's in the context of lo tisna tachicha confront the other person, and then lo tisa alav chet. Because if you are able to open up the discussion and you can have a, um, um, an interpersonal rea- um, relationship with that other person, so then you might find that there really isn't a cause for the enmity in the first place. If you go over to that person, she might um, apologize. Or the, um, that, or alternatively, the, uh, um, they'll admit their, their fault. You'll realize perhaps that what you thought was a slight wasn't a slight and wasn't intentional. And the, um, and, we'll be able to get on with our lives because otherwise you have this idea of loti salav chet. If I don't go and speak to that person, so then I will be holding it in and I will 
uh, bear it against him, not necessarily doing anything um, against uh, against her, but I will, I'll feel it in my heart. That's the lotisa lavchet. Then acharechen, after we've had this opening pasuk of how to diffuse a situation, as it were, acharechen yasir shelotin kol mimenu velotitor bilvavcha masha asalacha. Okay, the um, the Torah then goes and adds a the next step in saying, and don't take a some kind of action, um, some kind of revenge, or a grudge against what he did. Words there are um, there are different levels of strange relationships. If someone um, has slighted me in some kind of way, so I might not um, hate him. Hate is a very strong word. Enmity is a very strong word. Um, I won't really like him either. And when that person asks for a favor in some kind of way, so then I won't uh, be willing or open to, um, to helping them out. I don't hate him. I don't hate her, God forbid, right? Lo tisna tachicha bilvavecha. I would never dream of hating another uh, person. But that doesn't mean that I'm their best friend either. Um, and when people aren't best friends, so then they um, might not do favors for each other. They might, uh, they might have these little uh, uh, petty type of um, tit for tats. That's the, um, what the Ramban says is the context on the pshat level of loti kom veloti tor here. The um, idea being acherichen um, yazir shelotin kom veloti tor masha salacha. The however lufikach is yazirenu shimcha pesha achav vichetato milibo. Right, that's why you should be erasing it um, entirely from the um, from your heart. Vaacherichen yitzaveh sheyav lo kamohu. And after that, you can reach the level of v'ahavta l'reacha kamocha. Once you have um, done that, so then you can say, okay, v'ahavta l'reacha kamocha, ani Hashem, right? This is the, the goal. In other words, we started with lo tisnat achicha bilvavecha. We started with the, the negative. Don't hate your brother in your heart. And we've ended with v'ahavta l'reacha kamocha, right? To love him. And the um, and of course ahava is not only the opposite of sina, but it's also the the focus of levavcha. Here in this context, lotisnat achicha bilvavecha is that you are not necessarily expressing it; it's something which is hidden. But ahava lereacha kamocha, so love is something which is um, which is of the heart, um, and it is if I'm doing it kamocha. Right, so then it's implying that I'm so it's going in the opposite direction. I'm taking it from my heart, and I am um, applying it, and um, uh, in ways where there is an active expression of my love. Now, the Ramban takes this one step further. Okay, this is just the uh, not just, but the if you will, the uh, philosophical underpinning of what I want to talk about on the halachic side. The um, the Ramban takes this one step further, and he says, "Vitam," a, a very important um, uh, Ramban, even though I didn't put it in bold here, um, but it's a, a classic Ramban. Tam v'ahavta l'reyacha kamocha. Right, the Ramban is focusing on that lamed, right, l'reyacha kamocha, um, to your fellow, as yourself. So the it doesn't say. Vahafta et reyecha, that you should, if you, we would expect it not to be ahava le, but ahava et, lehov et, uh, right? Ani ohev otcha, right? I love you. So it's an et, it's not a le. Why is it a le reyecha, kamocha? So the Ramban says, haflaga. This is a, um, an exaggeration. What we would say, Hagzama uh, in modern Hebrew. Ki lo yikabel lev ha'adam sheyov et chaveiro 
Chavato et Nafsha. The Ramban says that it is impossible, or perhaps virtually impossible, to love another person as much as I love myself. My self-interest is genetically hardwired into our systems, and that element of that egotistical nature is something which is so innate that it is virtually impossible to reach a point where I can actually say, um, and the and the truth is, the Ramban says that halachically, we don't say this. We say we we are aware of the the rabbinic dictum that Rabbi Akiva had stated, chayecha kodmin chavercha. Right. That normally speaking, and there might be some exceptions to this, but normally speaking, we say that a person, um, if I if I have to choose between saving my own life and saving someone else's. So the, the, the default position in halacha is that my life comes first. Ella, so then what does the, this mean? The Ramban says, Mitzvah ta Torah sheyov chavero b'chol inyan kasher yohavit nafsho b'chol ato. What I'm trying to do is to reach the point that I look at this other person and I love her as much as I do myself, but it's a quest. That's why it's lireacha. It's almost a Zeno's paradox in terms of I keep getting a little closer, a little closer, a little closer, but the, and I never quite reach it, okay? Because perhaps it's impossible to reach. That's the, um, the idea here. The, but it's all started with lo tisnat achicha It all started with this, um, I, uh, this idea that someone slighted me, how do I respond? And if I respond correctly, I can reach the point or come very close to the point of a hafta l'reacha kamocha. That is uh, the ultimate goal, right? That's the getting back to the Midrash that we started with. That's the, the end of the Aserat Hadibrot, right? The, uh, if, if the Aserat Hadibrot were, on the one hand, I begin with Anochi Hashem Elokecha, and then you say, well, for what purpose? So the, the end goal is lo tachmod. The end goal is that I reach this point where I look at other people's, um, th- their possessions, and I don't have um, any sense of jealousy, and I don't, uh, um, I don't uh, covet them in any way. I don't desire them in any way. That is an end goal. Similarly, the haftal kamocha is an end goal. It's something which is incredibly difficult to achieve. It takes perhaps a lifetime of work to achieve. One never quite reaches that final goal. Right? If you think that you've reached it, you probably are further away than you were the moment, the, the moment before you thought it. And the, uh, but still, that is the, the goal. It starts with a not such a, well, I shouldn't say not such a difficult um, expectation, because it's difficult in its own right if someone has harmed me in some way, of lo tisnat achicha bilvavecha, but it reaches that positive aspect of a hafta l'reacha Um I might come back to a parallel to the lo Um I'm going to skip number three right now. Um, I want to, uh, that is where the, Ramba, the Rambam talks about, just to give you a sense, the Rambam uh, and we've spoken about this another shirim much more in at length and in depth. Now, on, when we talk about lo tachmod, lo tachmod itself has this um, higher spiritual value that I just mentioned. But at the same time, there are clearly defined halachic guidelines to what is allowed and what's not. What is within the context of the isur. Um, because there is an understanding or a, a realization that the um, that we can't necessarily um, uh, that we can't um, necessarily get a, uh, a to the the highest level um, what is considered to be acceptable what's not considered to be acceptable so that's with regard to lotach mode i'm going to leave it aside for the moment because i don't want to take too much time in that direction i want to stay within my 
uh, a lot in time. Um, maybe we'll come back to it, um, or maybe we'll save it for a different time. I want to look at the um, at number four. Here in number four, the um, the Rambam in Hichot Deyot, and it's important that the Ram that we note where the Rambam brought this halacha. Right? No came mechavero over below ta'asesh and emar lo tiko. So a person when he takes um, revenge, so he is in violation of the lo ta'aseh of lo tikom. The, Ra the Rambam continues, afapi she'eno loke alav, de'a ra'a hi ad me'od. So even though there is no um, punishment, there is no malkot, about with regard to Lotiko. We're going to talk about what is the Isra of Lotiko in just one moment, but there is no um, a there's no Isur per se. The reason why it's um, uh, it's understood that there isn't a um, Malkot, there aren't lashes that are given to this Lotase is because it's considered to be a lav she'en bo ma'ase. It's a lotase that a person violates when there isn't a um, um, when there isn't a uh, uh, an action that is done, um, my refraining from doing something um, is not necessarily a um, an isur. Um, I, excuse me, it might be an isur, but there's no action. So we'll see the example that the Rambam gives in just a moment. So a person should be ma'avir al midotav. Let's say um, we we speak about that in in modern Hebrew as well. Ma'avir midotav means that he should um, basically get over his um, his normal inclinations um, and rise above. We would say rise above. Um, your, uh, yourself in this regard. Al kol divrei ha'olam, whatever it may be. Shahakol eitzel ha'mevinim divrei hevel. Because ultimately, right, um, and maybe we um, have a, a better understanding of this kind of feeling um, during a, a, a crisis period like the one we're experiencing right now. Really, our what do we normally get worked up over? Right? These normal these things that we get worked up over are usually when we look back at them are divrei Havel the Havai. Right? They are elements which are really ultimately um, not too important. The Ainan Kidai Linkom Alehem. And they are not worthy of being um, uh, of, of revenging or avenging. Um, now, the this regard, um, the so what's the example that he gives? Keitzad hanikima, and we're going to see the source for this Rambam, um, or perhaps sources for this Rambam um, as we go along in the next few moments. But this is the classic example. Rashi also gives this um, example because it's brought in the Gemara. It's the Sifre. It's uh, this is the uh, example brought. Keitzad hanikima, amar lo chavero. So, a uh, if, your, if your fellow um, asked, hashileni kardumcha, amar lo eni mashilcha. So I went over to my neighbor. I needed an axe in the uh, in the Rambam's example. Let's bring it up to modern uh, times. I, I uh, my uh, my lawnmower is. Um, uh, is, uh, is, has, is, isn't working, and I go over to my neighbor and ask him to borrow uh, the lawnmower. And he says, no, right? sorry, I can't lend you uh, my uh, lawnmower. Lamachar, the following day, Tzarikli show me menu. Amar lo chavero hashileni kardumcha. So the um, the, the the next day, neighbor comes over and asks me for my lawnmower. Or we'll make it a little bit, you know, perhaps he says, oh, 
can I borrow your hedge trimmer? Amar lo, eni mashilcha kederach shelo hishaltani, kishashalti mimcha, hareza nokem. So I respond, well, when I needed a lawnmower, you weren't there for me. So you want my hedge trimmer? You know, go find it somewhere else. I'm not going to uh, give you my hedge trimmer the same way you didn't give me your lawnmower. But rather, uh, but rather when he comes and asks him to, to borrow, so the person should be much more uh, gracious and, and give it. Well, it's a uh, repay um, a lack of uh, favor by doing uh, good. Um, so if I bear a grudge, similarly, I'm, I'm in violation. So what is the nitira? What is the difference between revenge and bearing the grudge? So Ruven asks Shimon, to rent something, uh, rent a home, or to borrow an animal, and Shimon refuses. So again, the tables are turned um, a few days, years, whatever it is later. So if I would say, well, of course I'll lend it to you. I'm not like you. You didn't give me anything, but I'm a nice guy. I'm a good person. So I'm going to give it to you. That's the Isur of Lo Titor. Now, the Ramban, uh, excuse me, the Rambam says here that, the, um, that you should erase it from your heart and not bear the grudge. Now, this is a, an important, uh, it's a subtle point that the Rambam is making. You know, let's say I give him the, uh, the animal. I don't say anything, but I think it, right? In other words, he comes knocking on my door I, and needs to borrow my hedge trimmer, and I give it to that person. And I don't think, you know, I don't say to him, to him, you're really a jerk, right? I needed a lawnmower last week and you couldn't give me your lawnmower. I'm giving you my hedge trimmer anyway because I'm better than you. But I think it, I don't say it, but I think it. Is that over the issue of Lotitor? So if I looked at the first three lines of the Rambam, so I might say no. In other words, if I don't rub his or her nose in it, so then... I might not be over the Yisur, but then, but the Rambam says the expectation is davar milibo, that I should erase it from my heart. Velo yitrenu. Because nitira is the step before nikhima. Bearing the grudge is the step before taking revenge. So if that's the, the context, so I don't have to say anything. It's just if I'm thinking it. So if, I, if I'm thinking it, if I'm thinking that, listen, you are much, I am a much better person than you are. So then the next time I might take revenge. So that's why the Torah tells us don't bear the grudge at all. And this is the, um, uh, the, uh, the, the basis for the din. And the Rambam concludes the halacha, v'zohi ha'deya nechona she'efshay she'itkayin ba'yishuv ha'aretz u'masa'am u'matanam shel b'nei adam ze'im ze'. So this is the proper um, way of looking at things and which will allow for the proper functioning of society and um, the interaction between um, w- between people. Words. This is why the Rambam, as I said at the opening, the Rambam puts it in the Chod Deyot. Right? This isn't a, um, it could be, it could have been found itself in the Chod Nezikin, in the Chod Geneva of some kind, Gezel, Nezek, whatever. 
In other words, the Rambam doesn't put it within the context of the um, halachot that are of the um, that are dealing with monetary matters of Chosh and Mishpat. The Rambam puts it within the uh, the category of Hamada, right? Sefer Mada, the first of the Sfarim of the uh, of the Mishnah Torah, because this is character development, and this is the the core of what a good society should be uh, uh, built upon. And not, uh, these are not specific seifim in Hilchot Choshen Mishpat of, uh, of, of civil law. This is something which is, if you will, civilization law. Okay, that's the idea of a, um, why the Rambam places it here. Um, and he says that it, you know, quite clearly that, first of all, it's very broad ranging. Um, it's dealing with um, the very, the sundry matters between individuals. There isn't any uh, low tikkum. Um, the, uh, there isn't any, uh, you know, major slight that's been made here. Um, and this is the idea of, uh, of low tikkum. If anything, if I take a look at the, the Ramam and I compare it to that first Ramban, you know, originally when, I, when the Ramban, it's in, within the context of the, the Parsha, so it started with Lotis Nata Chichabil Vavecha. There was, there was an underlying rationale for why I would hate a person. Right? Um, my, so maybe you'll say, well, you know what? Uh, people are, are so petty that if, if, you're, if you go over to your neighbor and you ask her to borrow the lawnmower and she says no, right? So then people are so petty that they'll take that as a slight and they'll turn that you know, next thing you know, it's, um, you know, we have the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Romeo and Juliet story between different neighboring families. It all started, Hatfields and the McCoys all started because somebody didn't lend a lawnmower. Okay, maybe, maybe that's what happens. But I don't think so. I mean, it's, there are times that people, you know, we can all get over that kind of slight, at least on that level. We wouldn't say, I hate the person. But that is the, in the, um, that's the halachic um, ramifications and the halachic boundaries that are being set with regard to lotikom and lotita. Now, I just want to take one step back before I get a little bit more into detail on the halachic side and just ask, you know, why is it asur? You know, we normally say that the, um, the um, you know, we talk about imitatio dei. We talk about the idea of mimicking God and looking at his uh, or her, its values and uh, taking them upon myself. Mahu rachum apata rachum. Mahu chanun apata chanun. Why don't we say that mahu nokem, right? God is the revenging God. Apata nokem. Right? Why don't we say, right, we, that the, um, the, why is it, if there's no kem avon, if it's zocher avon avon. So if you remember the, the sin, the inequities, so why shouldn't we do the same? Why shouldn't we bear the same kind of grudge? Why shouldn't we have that kind of nekama? Um, and the chizkuni has the following um, uh, explanation. Chizkuni, the... Uh, 13th century uh, Parshan, uh, French Parshan, based, strongly based on uh, earlier uh, uh, Parshanim, but he says the following, Lo tikom lefi shahachema mechabashtcha, aval akadosh baruch hu, shahu kovesh et hachema, ktiv nokem Hashem ubal chema. The question is, well, What's going to take over? You know, I, I, I said before, you know, wh where did the, um, the Hatfields and the McCoys um, begin? You know, what, what started that, uh, that family feud that, uh, that took off? Um, where do all of these things begin? So maybe they all, maybe sometimes they begin with major slights, but other times they begin with, with minor things and we allow the chema uh, mechabashtcha, right? Our anger conquers us. The nature of human beings 
is that we let our emotions over, uh, overcome us. Um, God doesn't have that problem. Because who kovesh et ha He's able to mete out punishment, call it revenge, call it what you will. But it's not being done out of, uh, out of anger. It's not being done out of, um, out of proportion. So God is able to do that. We have a great deal of difficulty, if not impossibility, of, uh, in terms of drawing the line. So the Torah is saying, lo tikom velo titor. If you're, um, for us, we overcome our natural instincts at times by doing good, by being rachum, by being chanun, by um, giving up on the, my own personal interest in order to um, help another individual. Um, when we are, um, when we are in, uh, engaged in nikima and nitira, so then our focus is on ourselves. And when our focus is on ourselves, so then it's very difficult, if not impossible, to, to stop and to draw the line. So therefore, the Torah says, don't do it. So even though we have this idea of mahu rachum, we don't say by the same token, mahu nokem afatanokem. Now let's take a look at the, um, at the halachic uh, side of it. Because if I left the, the, the shear here, um, I think that there would be a, a legitimate question um, as to the, call it the, um, you know, just call it uh, how, sorry for uh, blanking out for a moment. How realistic is it that we are um, going to be uh, doing this, kind of have this kind of, uh, uh, this kind of attitude? Is there no time whatsoever, especially if I go back to what the Ramban said at the beginning, I have lo tisnat achicha bilvavecha. Somebody harmed me in a real way, cheated me. Not uh, something, it's not that I asked him for the lawnmower. It's that we had a business deal, she was my partner, and she, you know, she stole from the company. And now I'm being told, well, don't take any action. You know, almost along the lines of, you know, the, uh, what's no, you know, the Christian kind of concept, turn the other cheek. Right? Is that what the Torah is expecting of me? Is there no time that I can't take steps to revenge myself? Right? If I've been harmed in some kind of way, there's no way that we, um, there's, there's no recourse um, in the halachic system for that, because of loti kom and loti tor. So the Gemara in Yoma says the following: Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Mishum Rabbi Shimon ben Yotzadat, Kol Tamid Chacham Sheino Nokem Vinoter Kinachash, Eino Tamid Chacham. Okay. Now you take that. That is, think about it. Any Talmid Chacham who does not take a revenge, who does not bear a grudge like a snake. Kinachash. Eino Talmid Chacham. Then that person isn't a Talmid Chacham. Right? My guess is that there are plenty of people who might say, you know, the, there, are, there are certain elements of being a Talmid Chacham that are beyond me. You know, I, I can't grasp all of Shulchan Aruch and all of Shas. But to be no came and no ter kenachash, that I can handle, right? I'll be a talmid chacham in that way, right? I'm sure there's some people who are like that, okay? But the statement here is to say that, you know, that's what a talmid chacham is. Somebody who, you know, the, the imagery, think of the, you know, like a cobra, you know, just waiting to pounce and then snapping at the mongoose. That's the, the imagery that the uh, Gemara wants to, us to see. That's the Talmud Chacham. So the Gemara says, you know, that's really very interesting, but there is a Pasuk, Haktiv lo tikom right? What do you mean? 
there's a pasuk that says, don't take revenge. So the Gemara says, no. Hahu bimamon hu dichtiv. So that is with regard to monetary matters. Ditanya. Ezo hi nekima ve'ezo hi netira. So there's a brighta. And this is the brighta that the Rambam referenced earlier. Nekima amar lo hashelein magacha amar lo lav. So I asked for the lawnmower, and he says no. The machar amar lo hu hasieni kardumcha. The following day, he asked me for the hedge trimmer. Amar lo eni veshelcha kader shelo yishaltani zoi nekama. Right, the example that we just had. Now, when it comes to these kind of monetary issues, that is where loti kam loti tor. But if you're dealing with other types of issues, so then you're allowed to, and it's actually something which is laudable. No came no ter kenachash. So the Gemara says, so what is that? Sarah de gufa lo. So it means, so that means if then, if he's caused me pain, not that I've had a, some kind of monetary loss, but rather there is physical suffering or perhaps emotional suffering that he caused me. So that's what's left. And that's what the Talmud Chacham is allowed to and is expected to um, is expected to revenge. So those people who are insulted do not insult in return. They hear their shame being broadcast. But they don't respond. They continue to work with love and they 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 are happy, they they relish the um the the suffering that they have. Alena Katuva Mer Right? The ones who love him, this their their strength is like the strength of the sun rising in the morning. So it's important here that even at this point, even though it's saying, listen, you're not going how can you say a Talmud Chacham should, should respond? After all, we have this idea of Hanel Lavin Ve'inam Ovin. Okay? Um, it's, already the Gemara has said that's not Nekima V'Nitira. Already the Gemara is saying that's not Lotikom V'Lotitor. If you don't, you, it's, it's not good character. Right? We want people ideally to be Tzadikim. O Havav if you want to say, you know, I take a look at this person, I say, oh, this is the Chafetz Chaim. Right? This is a, you know, a Mother Teresa type of figure if you want to talk about in, on, uh, on the world stage. So then you could say, okay, that's who that person is. But the rest of the 7 billion of us aren't expected to be that way. So the Talmud Chacham is expected to be that way. And therefore, he shouldn't respond when it comes to Tsar de Gufa either. But it's, it's, there's a strong implication here that this is not loti kom veloti tor if I do respond. Or there's, it's important to, to stress that there's a gap between being a Russia and not being a, a tzaddik olam. Right? Most of us are somewhere on that scale between being rishaim on the one hand or being tzaddikim on the other. And our, of course, our uh, goal in life is to keep ratcheting it up to get closer and closer to the, uh, the tzidkut level, okay? But that is something which is, um, um, that's something which is exactly that, it's tzidkut. It's not a, um, an isur if I, if I failed in it. However, getting back to the tamide chachamin who are expected to be doing this, so the answer is that um, the that you hold it in your heart. In other words, you don't necessarily do something about it, but you you will will say you forgive, but you don't forget. Okay, that is um, uh, that's the problem. So 
the, but doesn't Rava say, the Gemara, the Gemara keeps pushing it and says, isn't it true that if you can get over yourself and, um, and give up uh, this grudge in your heart, then you can, then God in turn will forgive you for all of your sins. And the Gemara answers, no, the Mephai Soleil U now that only applies is if that person came and apologized. If she apologizes to me, and even though, you know, just because you said you're sorry doesn't mean that everything is fine. Okay? That is something which um, is what we meant, mean that you're supposed to, to give up on it. But here, if the if person didn't come to me to apologize at all, so the, the, the Gemara says that Tamide uh, Chachamim are expected, um, then the, um, that uh, are, will, are expected to, to hold that on. Now, the, um, how do I take this Gemara and basically square the circle to the idea of Loti Kamba Loti Tor? Whereas I had this idea earlier of loti kumba loti tor, and it seemed to be very, very broad. The, you know, to go back to what the Rambam said, um, the Rambam said very clearly that the this idea is um, one where the um, that that as long as you hold anything in your heart, calls manshu no tera So as long as it's in your heart, it's a a time bomb that's just ticking along. So here the Gemara seems to be indicating that I can hold things in my heart and that I can, um, that I'm expected to hold them in my heart. So where does that come, uh, how, do I, uh, how do I jive these two things together? The, um, the Chizkuni in the Ramban, getting back to the same Chizkuni, says um, the following. He says, the, um, uh, we'll see first in terms of the, the context of the, if you will, the Parshanut, and then the Ramban's, uh, way of understanding it, lahalacha. He says, "Yesh lomar shaharishon lo hiniach lahashilo el machmat saru." Let me take a step back. The Chizkuni asks a, a, a very important question. The the and it's something which, you know, I guess you could think of it this way. Let's take the lawnmower hedge trimmer case, right? If I don't give the hedge trimmer after he didn't give the lawnmower, I'm over the isur. Right? Okay. What about him? I have a real reason why I didn't lend the hedge trimmer to him. Right? Because he wasn't very nice to me. So I, okay, maybe I should have gotten over that and I should have been super nice to him. But he didn't even have that excuse. Maybe last week, when he came knocking on my door asking for the cup of sugar, I gave him the cup of sugar. And now I asked him for a favor and he turned me down. So I'm over the Isser. He's not over any Isser. Where, where does that come from? Right? So the Chizkuni is bothered by this type of question. Why should the person who responds be the one who is at fault? Whereas the one who instigated the whole, uh, the whole incident, he doesn't have any Avera whatsoever. How could that be? So he says the following, Yesh lomar, sharishon lo hiniyach lahashil lo el machmat sarut ayin shaya migalo chaviv alav, ve'ein ha-kadosh baruch hu machricho lahashil kelav shalom mirzona. The reason why the Chizkuni says is because let's ask ourselves, what are the right of personal property. Do I have to lend things to other people? And the answer is, no, I don't have to lend uh, things to other people. If I have my property, so maybe, let's say when I went over to my neighbor and I asked him for the lawnmower, I don't know the whole story. It could be it's a brand new lawnmower. It could be that two weeks ago, he lent out his car to someone and the car came back with a dent in the door. And he basically said, listen, I just want to, I don't want to have to deal with these type of headaches. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lend out my, uh, my things uh, that could be damaged. Now, 
that doesn't make him a tzaddik necessarily, but it also doesn't make him a rasha. He has that right. He's not doing it out of stinginess. He's simply doing it out of self-interest. And we all have the right to self-interest. We all have the right to personal property. Right? So if that's the case, he didn't do anything wrong. Abalzeh, however, the second person, I would have lent it to him. I have this hedge trimmer. I have the gemach for hedge trimmers. And of course, I would lend it out to anyone in the neighborhood. But now I'm not going to lend it out to this person simply because he didn't do me the favor. Then that's the isur. In other words, if I'm doing it, what, what the nikama in of itself, if you will, is sort of neutral. The, or or the, the lack of uh, giving, uh, doing favors is, is, a, is neutral. It can't, it's all a question of the, um, it's all the question of what the framework is and what the, the background is. So in, since this is within the context of Sina, he says, so then that's the Isur. If there's no Sina that's involved, so then perhaps there isn't the, the Isur. This is a little bit different than what the Ramban said at the beginning of the Shir. The Ramban said that Loti Kom Loti Tor is if I've already gotten over Loti Snat Achicha Bilbavecha. I don't hate him. It's just that I don't want to help it. Okay? That, the Ramban says, is the Isur. The Chizkuni seems to say that that might not be the case. Now, the Ramban continues this and says that the, um, with regard to uh, Nikima and Nitira, so he, he says the following. Kfar pirshu raboteinu, shuhu v'davar she'ein bo chiyuv mamon. Now that word chiyuv, right, which you know, here in the original text is in bold and in italics and underlined. So I'm going to highlight it too, right? So this is a very, very important word, chiyuv mamon. If I will keep coming back to that, uh, that example of the lawnmower, there is no, there's no, there's no implication here that I could take him to court in any court of the world. If a person doesn't want to lend me his um, doesn't want to, to lend me um, his lawnmower. Right? There's no, no damages were done. Now, it could be that my lawn looks terrible as a result, but again, he didn't, I, he has no, there's no chiyuv, there was no obligation on his part to lend me the lawnmower. He didn't, there was no breach of contract. However, he says, ki bedavar shenit chayev lo chavero mamon, if, on the other hand, you have a situation where there is a monetary obligation, so if that person actively harmed my interest, right, he didn't, it's not that he, uh, he broke my lawnmower. It's not that he didn't lend me his lawnmower. He broke my lawnmower. So there is no chiyuv to forgive that. So then the Ramban says, I mean, because you could look at it and say, if someone hurts my interest, my going to court is a form of revenge. The court might um, uh, level fines against that person. There will be damages taken. So why am I not over the Isur of Lotikom? Because the Ramban says the Isur of Lotikom doesn't apply the, in, in cases of monetary loss. It only applies when a person didn't do a favor for you and your response is not to do a favor for them. That is the problem of lotikom, the lotitor. And the Ramban goes, doubles down on this idea. All the more so when it comes to affronts. And he gives the, the example, or this is um, an affront, which is a um, where there actually has, is bodily harm. Um, uh, we have the, the concept of the Goel Hadam, the blood avenger. And a, the, the blood avenger is the person who is responsible to 
make sure that justice is served um, when things happen. So, you know, you, you say someone doesn't not lend me a lawnmower. He, uh, he kills my brother. And I'm supposed to say, okay, loti come, loti tor. I don't have to do anything. No problem. Right? That's not what the Torah is expecting. So basically what the Ramban is saying is that he has taken this idea of loti come, loti tor from its, from a much broader type of sense and saying that in terms of the, uh, the application, it's much narrower than we might have, uh, might have thought otherwise. Right? To, bear, to bring this home, there's a, this, in, you know, this incredible um, tshuva of Rav Yitzchak Bar Sheshet, the Rivash, 14th century Spain, um, where he talks about the following case. I mean, it's like, you read this, you can't believe it. He, he talks about a situation where he, um, it, this is mid tshuva he has stepped down from the podium at a levaya in which he had um, given a hesped um, to a certain chacham who had passed away. And he says, Achar suyumi, after I finished my hesped, after I finished my eulogy, patach iyov et piho vayikalel. Iyov opened up his mouth and he cursed. It's it's a paraphrase on Eov staying quiet and this this Job, so he, um, he, he opened up and he cursed. And he mentions by name who this person was, who Rav Yitzchak Bunstruck. Okay, this Rav Yitzchak Bunstruck, he was a person who was the next, um, was the next Satan, he was the next um, uh, eulogizer on the, on the ticket. Hitchil Adrosh. So this is what he began to say. V'amar, he introduced his hesped by saying that ultimately God will, a, a, per, a person who gives a eulogy which isn't uh, deserved and heaps false praise upon the dead, right, will have to give um, a, an accounting to his maker it's me'idin edut sheker lefnei Hashem. It's as though he is giving false testimony. Right? He basically gets up there and he says, I have come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. And with that, he launched off on a attack on the character of the person who had passed away and said how he had wronged him in his life, meaning the 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 the, per, the niftar had wronged Rav Yitzchak in his life, and he even topped it off that the it must be the um, you know the, uh, the it's interesting in the tshuva the Rivash writes Hayad datenu latzet mi beta knesset beemtzad varav I. I and other people around me wanted to get up and walk out of the shul while he was speaking, because this is just unacceptable. But but we stuck around hoping against hope that he would say something nice. But he didn't. He said, listen, I'm sure, this is the, 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 the backhanded phrase that he gave, and it was apparently a, a, a chacham, who he was eulogizing. He said, I'm sure, um, he said, I'm sure that when he, um, was on his deathbed, he must have said vidui for the terrible things that he did against me in his life. Because I'm sure he didn't want to go to, to, to meet God with this on his conscience. And therefore, you know, um, I want everyone to know that no, regardless of all the terrible things that he did to me in his lifetime, I'm forgiving him. Right? And then he sat down. That was the end of the, um, the eulogy. Okay, you can imagine being at that kind of levaya, what happened. So the Rivash is scandalized. And he says the following, that... Um, the uh, uh, 
so he says, Omnam, im krovea chacham, nachat eden. Right, if the, the nun ayin is the equivalent of zifrono livracha, okay, that he's, uh, he is resting in heaven. If the relatives of this person, of this chacham, yirivehu v'yisne'ehu alzeh, so if they, right, you could see all of the, the relevant, the, the relatives just aghast at what they just heard. Hadin imahem. The halacha is they're allowed to hate this individual. Ki me'olam lo shamati nevelakaza. I have never heard something so scandalous. Afilu al kal shebekalim atal in chume tzuure mitzarinai. Right, they, his role is, was to comfort, and he just caused greed, okay, to the, to the people. So this was, this is a, taking it even, maybe even a little bit further than the Ramban did, and he's saying that when it comes to real egregious personal affront, we're not expected to, um, uh, to, to turn the other cheek. Nikama and Lotitor is within the context of, if you will, character development. Um, and if things, if I'm, if I haven't been hurt, I'm not expect. If then I'm expected not to, if you will, deepen the cycle of uh, of enmity. I'm supposed to break it. If I've been hurt, so I may have the the. It might be a good thing for me to uh, going back to the Gemara and Yoma. Um, saying that I should be along the lines of those tzaddikim. But it's not something which I'm um, necessarily expected to do, or if I, if I violate it, I'm over the isu. But that, I have, you know, I have to tell you, that doesn't sound like the Rambam. The Rambam didn't make the distinction. The Rambam ignored the Gemara in Yoma. He didn't describe how in cases of monetary loss, I have the right to take revenge. He says, you know, in a very categorical type of way, and as I said earlier, it's in Hilchot Deyot, it's in the question of the halachot of character development. So there, the Rambam talks about very, very clearly that all forms of nikama, all forms of nitira, all forms of revenge or bearing a grudge, all of these things are asr. The Rambam doesn't make that distinction. What does the Rambam do with the Gemara? Why doesn't the Rambam agree with it? So here, the Rambam, the, um, I believe the answer lies in what is the proper nusach for that Gemara. This, is, this nusach is found in the source of the Gemara, and the Midrash um, uh, Sifra, the Midrash Halacha on Sefer Vayikra and Parshat Kedoshim. It's found in some of the manuscripts within the Gemara itself. And it's quite possible that this was the, the nusach that the Rambam had. Number 11. Lo tikom ad heichan hi kocha shel nikima. Until what point is the strength of revenge? Amar lo heshileni malgalcha v'lo heshilcha l'machar amar lo heshileni kardumcha. So the then it gives the example, the lawnmower hedge, hedge, hedge trimmer example. Now, those two words, ad hecha, okay, that, those two words are so, so critical. Later on in low titor, again, ad hecha, till what point? In other words, by adding those two words of ad hecha, what the Midrash is doing is saying, this is not the example, but rather, this is the extreme example. Whereas it's understood that if I have been truly slighted and hurt, I have to get over that. That's lo tisnat achicha bilvavecha. Right? We have to break the cycle of enmity. But what about something as trivial as a favor not done? I'm not bearing any uh, bearing any enmity, right? Okay, you don't want to be my friend. I won't be your friend. That's basically all that's happening. So I might think that that doesn't even, that's not included in Lotitor at all. That's not bearing a grudge. 
I'm simply saying, listen, I can read the social cues. You don't like me. Okay, you don't have to like me. And I don't have to be your friend either. That's all that it is. And the Torah wants to say that's not all that it is. That's the, that's the extent that I'm expected to be ma'avir al midotai. That's the extent that I'm expected to swallow my pride a little bit and try to be kind even when people aren't kind to me. That's lotikom velotitor. And that's where the Rambam might be getting it. That's why the Rambam is saying that in that line that we read earlier on, um, the um, the zehu adeya nechona shev shayi sheyit kayem ba yishuv haaretz umasaam umatanam shel bnei adam ze im ze. The final line that the Rambam uh, ended the halacha with that this is the proper kind of conduct that we're supposed to have one with the other, even in situations which in any normal, I call it again normal, if you will, if I go, were to go into the outside world and say, is this nikima, is this revenge, right? Think about it, you know, the vengeance is mine and I won't give you my hedge trimmer. That's, that's not exactly how it works, right? Vengeance is, a, you know, revenge, as we all know, is a dish best served cold, right? That's not what we're talking about when we talk about you didn't, you know, you didn't invite me to your party. I'm not going to invite you to my party, right? That's the, uh, but the Torah is saying you don't have to wait to have something which will make great literature or a good movie to reach the point where you're over lo tikom velo titor. Even in the minor trivial interactions between human beings, that's lo tikom velo titor. That's something that you have to be very careful about. The, um, as I said, now, what would the Rambam say about the, those other situations? Um, so uh, that the, you know, the case of the Rivash, what about the idea of the Tamid Chacham? So here the Ritva, and maybe this is something that the, the, the Ritva, the Rambam would be forced to say. The Ritva in his reading of the Gemara says, Afagav the Ketiv Lotikom Velotitor, even though it says, do not take revenge, do not bear a grudge, Hatam b'milei de alma. When is it forbidden? In the in that in things that are happening in the world itself. Ava b'milei de shemaya ibay leliot no kem venoter. A talmid chacham has to distinguish between his own personal interests and, if you will, the interests of the community, the interests of God. Milei de shemaya. The only time the Ritva says that, a, that revenge is considered to be laudable is if it's not your honor that's at stake, but rather a higher value that's at stake. Then, if, you're, if you will, it's on principle, then you can do it. Now, to make that distinction is very, very, very difficult. Right? All too often, Right, we we step back and we'll say, what is my interest is the higher principle, right? We're blinded by our own self-interest, and we think that what is what's going on is that that there that God has been offended in some kind of way, but it's not really God at all. It's just me, right? The um, if you will, what I like to call the Sussman-centric view of the universe. Okay, then we're, we all have that, right? We're, that we are in the center of the, of the universe and it must be that God's pretty upset too. To make that distinction, right, is not easy, but the distinction is a legitimate distinction. That's where the Talmud Chacham is allowed or even expected to strike back like the snake. But in everything else, lo tikom velo titor. The, the, Ram, the Ramban's approach was more that it's in, in areas where there's been real, um, real, uh, real, uh, uh, oh, blank it out again. Um, when there's been real uh, attack against an interest of mine, I have a, um, a violation of my interest. So then I have the right, um, perhaps even the obligation to, uh, to respond. 
the um, just to uh, leave, uh, um, we started a little bit late, which is why I'm going over time here. Just two more minutes, please bear with me. The um, I'll just uh, end with the uh, words of the Chafetz Chaim and then uh, the words of the Nitziv. Um, the Chafetz Chaim here says in his uh, the Be'er Ma'im Chayim, um, the Hilchot Lashon Hara. It's uh, the, um, it's not as famous as some of his other works. But he asks the following, he talks about, well, when are you going to uh, be over the Isur and not? Um, he says that he viewed, I'm just going to go, you know, please read the entire quote um, afterwards. But the, um, just take the, I'm just going to take the, the bottom line, literally. The conclusion that one can draw from what I'm saying now. If a person was harmed personally, bodily, perhaps in, whether it's psychologically, whether it's physically, whether it's monetarily, so there it turns out that it's an argument between the Rishonim, between what I think is the Rambam on the one hand and the Ramban on the other. So it becomes a machloket. So when I have a machloket between Rishonim as to what is the Isur, and it's a din de oraita, it's a Torah precept. So the basic rule is always sveka de oraita l'chumra. I always say that when I should be erring on the side of caution, and that is the, the is, uh, therefore I have to be extra careful. There might be those who say, well, to be machmir, I should be machmir and uh, take revenge. I don't know if that's what the Chavetz Chaim meant. I don't think so. But if it's monetary, so then it's forbidden. Now, as I said, the Ramban might disagree. If, if going to court is not considered to be revenge. But, the, but basically, taking... Uh, actions to protect yourself wouldn't be considered to be revenge, but taking uh, punitive measures, perhaps that would, at least according to the Chavetz Chaim. And, with, and I'll close with the words of the Nitzit, because ultimately, and I think that the, all of the Dayot would agree with this, whether or not we dis- disagree on the particular detail of when a certain action may be halakhically permissible or Forbidden. So the Nitziv in his commentary to Loti Kom says it just very simply. Nikama eina mida hakdosha di Israel. Revenge is not a character trait that is going to lend to it to, to the point of a person being kidoshim tihiyu. Getting back to the beginning of the shir. The whole point of these mitzvot at the beginning of Parshat Kedoshim, that idea of Rabbi Levi, is that we are taking the precepts of the Aseret Hadibrot. We're taking concepts that are carved in stone, and we're turning them into living, breathing concepts that are carved into our hearts. And those those concepts that are carved into our hearts are reaching to the point, that impossible point, the way that the Ramban said, but nevertheless, that's what we're striving for, to reach the v'ha'afta l'reacha kamocha. And even if there might be situations where nikama is permissible, it's not a midak dosha Israel. It's not something which is going to further the goal of kedusha. And so therefore, I have the, um, the obligation to try to, to stop and break the cycle. And with this, he says the following, Hadavar Muvan, and with this we'll close. Shuhu mishum sha'asalo ra'a, mishum hachi meshivlo ra'a. It's understood. Normally, when people do things that are wrong to me, I wrong them in return. Aval hutacha tova shaitao selo lasod she'im hayao set tova, we all know this and we all say it, but it has to be said and really felt. 
the best way to break a cycle of enmity is to do good. If you respond not in kind, not even lo titor in the sense of not doing something, but doing something in a positive way to break the cycle, so then that is the best recipe for getting back to what we, uh, what the Rambam had said of creating a society, right? This is the society that we strive for. And ultimately, we want the society to be a society which is not based on tikom v'titor, and we don't really look at our tamidei chachamim as nokrim v'notrim kinachash, but rather as kedoshim tihiyu ki kadosh ani Hashem elokecha. Have a wonderful Shabbat, and it was wonderful to uh, not to hear you. Right, I look forward to joining with you again in the shear in person and being able to to hear all your comments um, and not people being muted. Um, and uh, uh, I hope all everyone is well and uh, have a wonderful Shabbat. שנייה, רב יהודה? Yes. כן, אנחנו פתאום לא שומעים אותך. אמרתי שלום. אה, אוקיי. אוקיי, אבל uh, בסדר, זה... Uh, סיימתי את השיעור. אה, שנייה, לא הבנתי. אתה, אתה סיימת את השיעור, נכון? כן.